Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to look at the first missing positive problem. The problem is that we are given an array of integers, positive or negative, and we have to find the first missing positive number in the array. And as a note, the numbers don't have to be unique. So if this is our given input array, the positive numbers one through three are present. So four is the first missing positive number, and that's what we would return. And if this were our input array, the positive numbers 1 and 2 are present, so the first missing positive number is a 3. Let's look at the brute force solution. The brute force solution just tries all the numbers and stops and returns the moment a positive number does not exist in the list. The code looks like this. We just iterate through the numbers from 1 to length of nums plus 1 and check if that number is in the list. If it is, we move on to the next number but if it's not, then we return that number. Finally, if we make it out of the outer for loop, it means that the first n positive numbers are all in the list, so we just return the n plus one number. The time complexity of the solution is n squared because it takes n time to search for a number in an unordered list. And we have to do this search, worst case, n times. We can improve our solution's running time by just using a hash set to trade time for space. We can first create a hash set of numbers, then we can check to see if that number is in the set in O of 1 expected time. However, we need n extra space to store the hash set, as opposed to the constant space in the solution without the hash set. So now that we have discussed the brute force solution and its small improvement, let's discuss the best solution, which runs in O of n time, like our hash set solution, but uses O of 1 extra space. Now might be a good time to pause the video and give this solution a try, but assuming you've given it a try, let's get into it. Let's pretend for a moment that we're only given positive numbers as our input, and let's also pretend that each number we're given is unique. For example, we're given something like this. Since the numbers we are given are always positive, and since array indices are positive except for zero, the idea behind this algorithm is that we can use the array as a flag for whether or not we have seen the positive number. So if we start off i in the first position, we see a positive 1, then we're going to flag the index 1 as visited. Now i is on the second element, and that element is a 2, so we then flag the second index as visited. Next we encounter the 5, so we should be able to flag the 5, but if you look carefully, although we have 5 elements, our index stops at four. So if we try to flag the fifth index, we're going to get an error. This problem is inherent to the fact that indexes in arrays start with zero, not one. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to shift our flags over to the left by one so we can fit the first five positive numbers. In order to better understand what I mean by shifting our flags, let's start over with the tracing with the shift. So with I on the first slot, the element in the first slot is a 1, but this time rather than flagging the 1 index, we're going to shift what we flag over by 1 and flag the 0 index. Moving along, we encounter a 2 for the second element. Again, this time rather than flagging the second index, we're going to shift it to the left by 1 and flag the first index. Now when we move on and encounter the 5, we're not going to get an out of bounds error, because rather than flagging the fifth index, which doesn't exist, we shift it over by one and flag the fourth index. On to the next iteration, where the element is a four. Here we flag the third index. And finally, we reach the six. Now we can't flag this because it's going to go out of bounds. But that's okay, because we only need to support the flagging mechanism for the first n positive numbers, where n is the size of our array. We only need to support flagging for the first n numbers because worst case is that all of the first n numbers are present, which means all of the first n numbers need to be flagged. And in that case, we just return the n plus one number, which is going to be our six anyway. So since the size of our array is five here, we only need to be able to flag the numbers one through five. Okay, now that we have traced through this, it might be clear what we can do. We just iterate through the array and our first unflagged index is our first missing positive. So here we start at position zero, and that is flagged, so we move on. Remember this represents the presence of a one. Now for the next position, that is also flagged, 
so we know that we have a 2 in our array somewhere. Just as a note, that the numbers in the slot don't necessarily have to line up, like the 1 and 2 here. It just happened to be that way for this example. Now we move on, and well, it looks like we found our first unflagged index. So this represents the fact that we don't have a 3 in our array. So that means we return the 3, which is not i, but i plus 1 to compensate for our shift which we were talking about earlier. As a reminder, we're still pretending that we can only get positive unique numbers as our input here. I'll address the cases where we could get negative numbers later, but for now, let's just keep pretending. Now let's talk about this flagging mechanism. How can we implement our flagging mechanism without using any extra space like a boolean array or something? Remember that we are pretending we only get positive numbers as input, so we can flag a number by marking it as a negative number. Let's go through the algorithm one more time with a slightly different example and use this new flagging mechanism of flipping a number to a negative. Let's trace through this array. We can see that 3 is the first missing positive, but how will our algorithm find this out? So like before, i starts on the first element. This element is a 5. Remember from earlier that we shift the flags over by 1. So rather than flagging the fifth index, which doesn't exist, we're going to flag the fourth index. But this time, rather than drawing in a flag like before, let's flag the number by marking whatever number is in that element as negative. Now we move on to the next iteration. This element is a 4. Again, rather than me drawing in a flag, let's flag this by marking whatever number is there as a negative. Now on to the next element, which is a 2. Let's flag the element in the first index by making it a negative. Now on to the next iteration. This gives us a negative 1. Well, this appears to be a problem because we should be marking a 1 as flagged and using a negative 1 as our index will actually give us an error. We're only running into this problem because earlier, when i was on the 4, we flagged this element as negative. In order for us to fix the fact that a flagged number could be negative, we can extract the actual value we need to mark off by just taking the absolute value. Now our algorithm can see that we need to flag a 1. And we can do that by marking the value at element 1 which is index 0, as a negative. And finally, we move to the last element. The absolute value gives us a 6, and this goes out of bounds. But that's OK, because we only need to be flagging the first n numbers. Now we can do our post processing like before. But this time, rather than seeing which element doesn't have an actual green flag I've drawn, we're going to see which of the first elements is not a negative, which means it hasn't been flagged. It should be clear that that element is in index 2. So again, we return i plus 1. And remember, we're using i plus 1, not i, to account for the flag shifts relative to the actual indexes. And one special case to keep in mind is if all the elements end up flagged. For example, an input like this, after flagging, would look like this. And you can see that all the elements are negative, meaning they are all flagged. In this special case, it just means that all the first n elements are present in the array. In this example here, we can see that all the elements from 1 through 5 are present. And in this case, we just return the n plus 1 element, which is 6. Remember this mechanism for flagging with negatives only works because we're pretending that our inputs are guaranteed to be positive unique values. To make this work with all inputs, we have to apply a pre-processing step before going to this mechanism. I'll show what that is in a moment, but for now, let's just keep pretending we're going to get unique positive values, and let's see how we can implement this flagging mechanism into our code. So our algorithm has two main loops. The first is to flag the inputs with our negative mechanism, and the second is to loop through and find the first unflagged element which with our negative flagging mechanism is equivalent to finding the non-negative element. In order to flag the inputs, we just run a for loop through all the elements in the input array. As we said before, we take the absolute value of the element. And now if we check if the number is one of the first positive numbers. If it is, then we do the shift by one element to the left and mark that element as negative. The second step is to iterate through the array once more and find the first non-negative element. If we do find a non-negative element, we return i plus 1 immediately. And finally, if we make it through the array without finding a non-negative element, then it's the special case where all the first n elements are present, 
and we return n plus 1 as the first missing positive. So this code works so long as the input is positive unique numbers. But now let's see how we can handle cases where the input is not necessarily positive and there could be repeating elements as well. We can handle the negative numbers with a pre-processing step. We can simply move all the positive numbers to the front of the array and we can do this by keeping track of an insertion index and simply swapping any positive number we encounter to this insertion index. The code to do this looks like this. We just iterate through, and if the number is a positive, we swap it and increment our p count, which represents our positive number counter. And now we also have to modify the rest of our algorithm to just iterate over the positive portion of our array. We are effectively just chopping off all the numbers that are negative. Now these modifications handle the negative numbers, but what about if the numbers are repeated? For example, if we have two ones in our array. This might pose a problem because on the line highlighted green here, we would flip the one element to a negative for the first one, but then we would flip it back to a positive for the second one we encounter. This would make the one element wrongly non-negative, and we would report that one in the last part of our algorithm, which I've highlighted red. So how can we fix this? Well, we need to ensure that a number can only be flipped negative and a negative number can't be flipped positive. To do this, we just add an extra check, which will make it so that the algorithm only flips the sign of a number if it's positive. If it's already negative, it just moves on. So this is our final algorithm. It works on all kinds of inputs. And although we have three linear scans, we don't have any nested loops. So our running time is O of N. And unlike the solution with our hash set, we don't use any extra space, so we have constant space. Well, that's it. We saw three solutions in this video, a brute force solution, which we improved with a hash set, and then this solution here, which achieves linear running time without any extra space. All the Python code will be on the Knapsack website, which I've linked in the description. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you found this explanation useful, and if you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel, as all the support really helps me keep making videos. But anyway, thank you for watching, and good luck on all your interviews.